there, Dr. Anna Maria Held, herbalist and microbiologist, and I thought I would continue with the theme I started the other day of putting wild plants into your garden, wild medicinal plants. So today we're going to take a look at Mormon tea, which is an ephedra species. Here goes. Here it is. This is Mormon tea ephedra. We have multiple ephedra species here in the West. There is ephedra viridis, green ephed which is green ephedra, and ephedra californica. There's a Nevada species of ephedra, and this is an ancient plant. It actually looks kind of prehistoric, doesn't it? Uh, it's thought that dinosaurs actually ate it. So if you look up close to it, one of the distinguishing characteristics is it's jointed. Um, so that's a good way to spot ephedra. And you'll find this in drier areas. It doesn't like too much water. And in fact, it's a great addition to the garden because it's quite drought tolerant. And it even puts up with the crappy soil that I have here in Durango, which is quite alkaline um, and very heavy clay. I have amended it a little bit, but it's still pretty heavy soil. And even though ephedra prefers while draining soil, as long as I don't overwater it, it does really well in the garden. And so you can start this plant from seed if you want to give it a go. Technically, they're not really seeds, but that's what people call them. They're little cone-like structures. You can actually harvest those seeds in the wild as long as the little hairs on them are dry. They're ready to gather, but you can also buy them commercially. If you want to skip a step or two, you can buy the plant commercially. <laughs> you can get it as a potted plant. You just need to be careful when you're transplanting it that you don't disrupt the root ball. Um, and so it likes sun. It likes not too much water. Although if you are starting it from seed, you do need to keep that uh, watered regularly. Two part sand, one part potting soil to get those going. And some people actually do cuttings as well of the woody stems in the summer. Um, so after the first monsoon has soaked the plant. So that's another way to go. And so beautiful plant to have in your garden, that blue silver coloration to it. Great medicine. And I'm only going to talk about a couple of things. But before I do that, I want to pause. A lot of people get this plant confused with Chinese ephedra, which is ephedra sinica. Uh, they're in the same genus, ephedra, but their chemistry is different as far as we can tell from the research done so far and the experience of us herbalists. Most of our Western, uh, by Western I mean North American, ephedra species lack those stimulating alkaloids that are found in Chinese ephedra. You may be aware that Chinese ephedra is actually banned in the United States because of its very stimulating ephedrine type alkaloids um, and people have really gotten in trouble with Chinese ephedra because there have been products from greedy people wanting to make money where they were selling uh, stuff that has a combination of ginseng and caffeine and ephedrine and people had heart attacks people had some serious issues that were susceptible to that way too overstimulating and so that plant became banned in the US this ephedra and other ephedras in North America have differing chemistry from Chinese ephedra. And, but you will see a lot of confusion online where a lot of people treat this ephedra and others that we have here in the West as the same as Chinese ephedra, and they're not. Now, I've had some people say that they felt a little stimulated after having some of our Western ephedra, Mormon tea, uh, but I've never experienced this myself, and none of my clients who I've used this with have experienced that. But you know, go go carefully if you have high blood pressure, just to be extra careful. Um, even a forest service uh, write-up online cited this ephedra, ephedra viridis, as having ephedrine and related alkaloids. But uh, the study they cited, they whoever wrote that article, they did not read that study because if you read the study they cited, they said that no, these plants do not have those stimulating alkaloids. Anyway. Enough about the chemistry, other to, than to say it's a great source of calcium. It's also a good source of silica. You don't want to drink gallons of the tea for that reason, but this can be a great tea to have to help support the health of your connective tissue. So that's one of the traditional uses. It's used to support the strength, but the flexibility of connective tissues. And interestingly enough, this includes connective tissues for our viscera, so the connective tissues that help support our liver and kidneys and keep them where they're supposed to be. 
Now, um, another use for this plant and what I most commonly use it for is allergies. This is a great tea to use coming into allergy season. And related species have been found in lab studies to have antihistamine effects. We can only guess that maybe that's what's going on with our Western ephedra. And to make a tea of this and actually taste pretty good, you want to simmer it for maybe five minutes or so, then shut off the heat and let it steep for a while. It's a tough plant and so it needs to be simmered if you just try to chop it up and steep it like a cup of regular tea it's not going to be very strong now of course before you put anything in your body you want to read up more on it and learn more about it look up well-respected herbal sites so that you're getting good info and you're not getting info from somebody who is confusing this with chinese ephedra so there you go a great wild plant that you can put in your garden so you don't have to go out into the wild to harvest it and <laughs> chop our wild plants not that i am against wild harvesting i do do it but it's always a great idea if you can if you have a pea patch in your neighborhood or any uh any dirt yourself to grow some of these things anyway thanks for tuning in be well